away we go. Okay, so today we're doing something a little bit different. You guys are working on your social media packs. So I want to introduce you to a couple of new Photoshop techniques that you may or may not know. So this is essentially the image we're going to be creating. It's pretty basic, but it shows you some of the masking techniques. Um, I show you how to sort of paint in and out your layer masks. You may already be really familiar with that. But then also just kind of working with type in Photoshop. Now my, pref my preference is Illustrator, but there's still a lot of really nice stuff you can do with Photoshop, especially if there's not going to be a need to scale this up. And that's why for like social media, it tends to be okay, because you're never gonna be printing these or making them really large. So if you're not comfortable in Illustrator, that's fine. So I'll show you my two resources. The first is actually yesterday for my advanced type class, I brought in typewriters. And I let, you know, if anyone wanted to, they could type stuff out and kind of get the texture because there's no, there's no digital match to the, the idio, um, idiosyncrasies or the irregularity of type from a typewriter. You can even see here that I hit the C key harder that time than this time. It just looks really beautiful. I moved the, um, I keep wanting to say Timpin, but I, I kind of moved it back and forth a little bit so I could type over top and kind of create some interesting looking sort of characters. So that was one. And then this here is Yupo paper, which is a plastic paper. It's really cool um, because it doesn't absorb. So if you watercolor on top or you put alcohol inks or something like that, they maintain very intense vibrancy because they're not absorbing into the fibers and dulling. They can also be picked back up later. It's an awesome material. It's super fun to work with. This is actually the semi-transparent vellum style one. And these are just alcohol inks that I just dripped on and that's literally it. And then I think I took like a white pen and I drew a couple little dots or circles to add some interest. So this is kind of based on, just if anyone's interested on the kind of root of what this is about, if I can get my preview to disappear. Um, this is based on the study of histology, which is this. So it's the study of microscopic anatomy. I don't know if that's relevant to you guys. Um, but you can kind of see that's where some of the visuals for this are kind of being drawn from. So that's just a little snippet. Let's actually get into making this image. So the first thing is to create my canvas, which you guys I'm sure know how to do. Uh, for the purpose of social media, let's actually make this, we'll do five by seven for now, but we may end up cropping it into a square. I probably should look up my Photoshop size, but we're just going to worry about the techniques. So I'm going to create that. I'm going to leave it in 300 and RGB since I know this will never be printed. Click OK. And then I'm going to just drag in my item. And I believe what that will do is place it. So what I have to do is hit this and hit place. It's now linked. If I were to change this file somewhere else, which probably no, not there, Photoshop please. Um, if I were to change this with like my hue saturation panel and like completely shift it, and then save it, it should update here. So because it's a smart object, it should update. Are you gonna update? Maybe, oh, nope, it just placed it as a smart object. So actually it's not gonna do it there, but if I do change it here and then save that, it's gonna change it there. So that's just something worth noting is that you can kinda mess with it like that as well. So now that I've adjusted that back, I'm gonna come right here. So first things first, I need to get rid of this little bit of a border. So I'm actually going to rasterize this layer because I don't really need it as a smart layer. Um, and then I am going to use level, so Command L to bring up my levels layer. And in this case, I'm just gonna pump that up a little bit and that should get rid of that white edge, bring some of my darker values up, click OK, and now that's ready to go. So I have this item over here. I don't really need to set it to multiply, but now we want to create some type and kind of integrate some stuff. And then we're going to do a couple little masks. So the type tool in Photoshop is different than it is in Illustrator. Generally, I think you can click and type, and this is called point type. So if I were going to, in this case, let's do a Q instead. If I were to click and do that, I can then scale the item. I'm holding shift here and do it like that. Uh, but I can also squash and stretch it. Let me tell you right now, do not do that. The type designers take so much time and effort and they go to school and they learn this and they spend years developing these typefaces. 
You cannot improve it with your two seconds of squashing and smushing it. Trust me, you are not making it look better. I promise you, you are not. So do not stretch and squash your tight. Any designer who sees it will immediately know that you are a heathen, so don't do it. Um, in this case, I do want a little bit of a different typeface, though. So let's go up here and maybe pick something. Um, that's kind of weird. I'm not really sure I like Apple Chancery in this, but it's kind of a cool shape, so we'll stick with that. I like this kind of curl here. Um, and let's change the color. I'm actually just going to make it like a light color pink for now, so hopefully you can still see it. I know the projector is not great. But even on live and adjustable type, you can create a mask. So the way I'm going to do that is come down here. I'm going to click my mask. It's going to add a mask. As long as I click on this mask and then paint or do whatever I'm doing here, it will block out parts of this layer. So it will mask this layer, not the layers behind it. And then what's nice about that is it's non-destructive. So if I come in here on my mask and I'm using my brush tool, I'm going to hit X to switch my colors. And then I can actually paint out, looks like my opacity is really low here. I can paint out sections of the type without damaging it and kind of let some of these blotches come back over top. But if I mess up, it's not a problem. I can just come back in with my white and repaint it in. And I actually want a hard edge brush now. So I can actually paint that right back in. And I can zoom in and kind of really fix it. My What I would probably do is actually set this layer in a lower transparency just so I can see what I'm painting out and painting in. So I can actually come in, and I'm just using a mouse. I don't need a tablet for this right now hit the X to switch my color swatches. And I just want to kind of try and get some of those irregular edges of the texture so that it feels a little more real. It doesn't look so... Let's even make the brush a little bit smaller, kind of break that up. And there we go. That side is fixed. So you can see when I zoom back out, it really does feel like that's over top. Now i got to come back down here and fix this one. So I'm going to go back to my brush, I'm going to hit X to switch my color swatches, and I'm going to paint this edge back in, because I definitely kind of overdid that one. Let's bring it up a little bit, because I can see it's still a little transparent, and then I'm going to switch my keys again, and rework that out. And there we go. So that's like our first little mask there. And then when I turn the, the opacity of this back up, you can see it again. So it looks a little better like that. In fact, I have a feeling that this letter needs to be a little bit different because the Q is not really showing up. So let's actually make it black instead of white like my previous example and check, see how that looks. That looks really nice. So you can see I missed a little spot. I just click back on my mask, hit my brush, switch to white, and just paint that back in. And so what else is really cool about this is by keeping the type live, I can just change the character, and then all I have to do is adjust the mask where it's needed. So that's what's kind of neat, is I have some flexibility here to really adjust and sort of play with it. So let's turn that back down. Let's mask back in. Um, we'll probably, I want this shape to come over top, so I'm going to zoom back in and just paint that out. So here we go to black and then we can just lightly paint it out. I'll fix the edges in a moment. If you don't know, if you're trying to get a straight line, you can click, hold shift, and then click again, and it will draw a straight line as well. It's kind of a little shortcut that I don't feel like a lot of people ever really learned. So, and if you already know this, I'm sorry that you're sitting through it, but hopefully you'll pick up something you weren't expecting at some point. So here we go. that out and then now it's time to do just a little more detail um, if you if you don't want to have to hand paint you can definitely use your pen tool if you're comfortable with it so if you want to make a selection with your pen tool and not a lot of people like the pen tool if they don't already know it it's very hard to like awkward to use it first but it allows you to get highly accurate shapes you can see I'm doing that Kind of working around my edges. It's going to kind of try and take the path of least resistance. And then I'm just going to close my shape here. 
And then I can make it a selection by hitting selection. I'm not going to feather the radius. And then I can actually, within that, either paint bucket in the white or the black, I should say, like that. Or I could paint it in with the brush, which would have been just as fast. Then hit Command D to deselect. And now we have a very nice sharp selection on that side. Let's paint this one in just by hand really quick. And I know it's pixelated because this is a very small image. There's that. And then now let's clean this side up so it has a little more interest to it. that. Just hit Command Z to not get that little white spot there. Use my Shift to kind of drop a straight line. And there we go. So that's a little bit better. Looks like I missed a little spot right there. You can also use soft edge brushes. If you need the brush to be a little bit softer and you want like a little bit of a hazy edge, you can do that and it will sometimes blend the edges a little bit better. So maybe like right here, I want a little bit of softness. And then we'll zoom back out, turn up our opacity, and we can see now we have like a really nice masked effect. So in your own photos, for example, let's say you have like a plant and like the leaves are kind of overcutting. This would be a great way to put text that kind of comes in front and in back. And when you situate the text in the graphic, in the photo, it feels more like a solid unit. It's going to be much more powerful that way. So. Let's go back and look at our example. We'll show the next step here. So here we got this. Now we got to add this other section of text. I'll show you these layer effects and we have to add this. So let's do that. I'm going to drag this in again. I'm just going to hit enter. It is a smart object. I'm going to rasterize it because I don't need it to be a smart object. And then the fastest way to get this to kind of do its thing is just to hit multiply and it's going to delete all the white. Now you'll see that there is a lot of paper texture that's still there. I'm gonna hit Command L for my levels, pump up the white value and bring in the black value and that will solve that problem. Now the only issue here is you can't really see it because it's going over top of the black. Whereas in this example you could because it was black going over white. So something I can do maybe to change that is I can, let's try and colorize it. I, if I double click on the layer, it brings up all my layer styles and I can do things like color overlay. Let's change the color. Let's make it like blue. And then you can hit blend mode. I think screen might work. Let's see. I'm trying to think of how I want to do it. There's a couple different ways I could do it. But let's see. Darken. Overlay might, it, it really, overlay is going to be pretty similar. So something that you might not know is these little lines divide the sections in how they affect the image. So these all deal with deleting the white. These all deal with deleting the black. And then these all deal with the color itself. And then I, I think these ones also have to do with color or something. I forget exactly what the rule is for these two sections. But I do know that this has to do with removing white from an image. And then the, uh, these ones have to do with removing black. So when you have a white image, it will screen through. So that's not quite achieving what I want to achieve. So I can, um, let's try Command U and colorize it that way. Yeah, that works a little better. So in the hue and saturation, I'm just going to add some color over top and sort of change its color like that. Maybe we go with like a, a blue. And then let's try a different layer mode for it to see if it'll kind of show up a little more powerfully over the black. So you can see in this one, when I got to this section, you'll see it's getting rid of the black and now we're seeing the white. So it's just a little bit different. So maybe we'll find something we like. I probably need to go through and actually select the white out and remove it, which is gonna be a little bit of a challenge because of these areas. One thing you can try and do, so I'm gonna set it to normal for a second, is you can actually turn off your other layers for a moment and then go to select color range and grab, put your fuzziness up to all the way and then actually use either your eyedropper or hit highlights and it will attempt to select all of the white areas. Now you can see it kind of gets rid of a little bit of my nice texture, but it might work here. So we'll hit delete, 
you can see that's a little bit better. I think there's a little bit of white haloing. Let's check by turning on our layers. Yep, a little bit of white haloing. So I'm going to hit select, reselect, select, modify, expand, one pixel. And then it looks like that might have been a little too much for it. I wonder if I can do half a pixel. Let's undo that. Step backwards, select, modify. You could try feathering it. Let's expand. Let's see if we can do 0.5. I don't think you can. Yeah, it has to be one. But we can do select, modify, and feather one pixel. Let's see if that kind of helps a little bit. I think that did. So now it looks a little bit better. So we can see the color over top. Let's drop down our opacity just a little bit. We can do, you know, some of our different techniques. So, so here you can see the screen. It kind of has an interesting effect. Maybe the linear dodge. Overlay is not going to do what we want. Difference is kind of interesting. Hue will just overlay overlay the color, which actually looks really beautiful kind of um, over. I can grab the right layer. That'd be cool. Over top of this. Um, really, you got to play with these to kind of see what you like. But we'll leave it as normal for now because you can definitely see it. And from a distance, it's going to work fine. So that was a couple different ways we can play with that. I'm going to grab all my layers and scoot them over just slightly. Turn back on my background. And now let's add the rest of our text. So this time, I'm just going to take my type tool and I'm going to, it looks like it's trying to grab that one. Let's make a new layer. I'm just going to drag a box. The reason I didn't do it over there is it was trying to grab this type layer. So let's type question. That's a word that starts with Q. I'm sure you guys figured that one out. Um, and let's try a different typeface with it. So something with a little bit of contrast. Remember, and okay, so there was actually, I've met someone or I've heard of someone before that didn't realize that the type could go bigger than 72 points. I know you guys are not that person, but like they, they seriously just didn't know that you could type in your own amount there. And I just thought that was really innocent and cute, but here you go. So we've got our question here. And then in my sample, you can see I did it kind of like a paper cut kind of inward and it actually has this texture. So let me show you how to do that. And then we can also add our outer glow or our drop shadow there. So for this one, what I did was I did a clipping mask and hopefully you guys have done those before, but if you haven't, here you go. So I'm going to go back to my Yupo texture and using my lasso, I'm going to grab this pink texture and I'm not worried about the black because I'm not going to grab that. I'm only on this layer. I'm going to hit copy and then above my type layer I'm going to hit paste and now I have that here. Now this scan I think is a high enough resolution that I can actually stretch this out a bit to fit my, my word. And then when I hit enter it goes back to high res and this time I'm going to bring it over my question part of the word. I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to hit create clipping mask. What's nice about that is I can then move the mask around so you can see I'm arrow tooling it where it needs to be. And there now we have that feature. So I think actually in this one the red might have been a little bit better but that'll be fine. This is our typewriter type. This is our mask. This is our text. What's so nice is now, like if I spelled this wrong, I can fix this. So if I just wanted it to be quest, I could do that. In fact, let's actually just make it quest. I think I want to be about 90. There we go. Perfect. So now I can move these two layers by shift clicking, scoot this up. There we go. And now I'm going to do the same thing on this layer here. I'm going to mask out this little section so that it moves behind. Let's set it down in transparency. And you can see the mask or the clipping mask will, uh, will follow the transparency of this layer here. Let's grab our black. Grab our mask. And paint out this one section right here. There's that. Zoom back out. And then let's bring its opacity back up. 
And now we're on like the finishing touches. So this is, you know, if you have some photos that are maybe more textural or something like that, these are great options for how to kind of integrate your text. So using a different photo that's more um, abstract and kind of dropping it in is another good way um, to sort of integrate those in your social media images that you're doing. And now the last thing that this image needs to match our previous image is some layer effects. So I'm going to come to my Q layer, which is right here. I'm going to double click it. And then in the other one, I had a drop shadow, but I'm not sure if that's going to read as well for this one. Let's up the opacity. You kind of can't almost see it almost just blurs the edge. So instead, let's do an outer glow. And let's bring up the opacity. Let's bring up the spread. I don't know. You could probably see it if I do it really extreme there. And you can see any little artifact element will also get this effect. So you have to be kind of careful about how you use it. So let's um, increase the spread, the size a little bit. Let's bring our opacity down a lot. And let's change the color to like a yellow that kind of matches what's in our image. And of course, I have a waiting wheel as this image probably crashes altogether. Well, you can see my outer glow though, so at least there's that. Um, if you have like these extra artifacts of stuff, all you're going to have to do is go back into your mask and just make sure you erase that out further so that you don't have those little artifacts. So let's see if I can, oh, okay, we did it, we survived. Uh, I'm going to grab like a, a buttery kind of warm yellow color, peachy-ish color. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to come back into my mask real quick and I'm just going to knock out these little areas. So the reason that's showing up at all is there clearly was maybe like 1% left of that image, maybe super transparent, that it was trying to pick up. And then I'll do the same here, delete that. And there we go, we now have an outer glow on that. And then for the other text, I'm going to add a bevel and emboss. And so with the bevel and emboss, I want an inner bevel and I want it to be, I think there was something I switched here. Let's make sure. So we can soften it a little bit. Let's up our size. And then there was something, I, let's try switching the angle a little bit. Sometimes that'll help make it look a little more like, there we go. So at about this angle, it starts to look more like it's cut into the white background, which if I can get back there, That'd be cool. There we go. So right around there is where it starts to look almost like that texture is coming from behind. And then this paper white on top is, is kind of casting a shadow into it. So let's actually play with some of that. Turn our opacity down a little bit. And that kind of just gives it a little bit of a sunken in 3D effect. You can actually turn down the highlight portion, which that will kind of also push the effect. So you can see without the highlight, it looks less rounded. It looks a little deeper, like a paper cut. And then let's zoom in so you can kind of see that. So you can see it really does sort of look like the, the white paper is casting a shadow into the type there. So that is essentially, in so many steps, the creation of this image. The only difference being this is different typography and we used a white letter form. So maybe that shows you a couple techniques you might be able to use. As a quick review, one of the techniques from last time was, we'll do it on our UPO texture, was our gradient map, which is right here, and allows you to apply a color to the gradient values of your actual image. So it's basically like from black to white or white to black, it's going to change the color based on how you set up this item. And then you can always reverse it and it will map the opposite way. So that one is not as effective with the reverse. Let's try that one. And then when you reverse it, it does something else. So these are great ways to sort of play with your photos and maybe do something a little bit different. Um, but that's that. So, of course, save your file so you don't lose it. And then that's the outcome for that.